Do you like gratuitously over-engineered 3D prints? It will come as a surprise to nobody to hear that I like chunky designs. I like substantial tactile things. And I ask myself why? I mean, yes, it's an appealing aesthetic, but why specifically the 3D printing? And I think it's just the nature of plastic. If we compare glass, for example, glass is, it's heavy, it's, it's cold to the touch, it, it's very strong, let's not test that, uh, but it, it has this kind of inherent appeal just out of the, the, the material itself. I mean, it's an amazing material. Likewise, metal, some kind of steel, it has that, that strength to it, that, that, that robustness. But plastic doesn't necessarily have those things, at least not, you know, without deliberately designing them in. And that, I think, is this the appeal for me, that I like this, the idea of, of strength and robustness in, in the, the things that we're making. Now, I'm talking purely form here, over function, so not necessarily even trying to consider how this might be used. It's purely a consideration of, you know, where the appeal comes from, from a purely visual aesthetic point of view. So where did this chunky vase idea actually come from? Well, I had two types of brown PLA, Ethan PLA Plus, and I really liked the way they went together. And it gave me a kind of a, you know, a pottery vibe. And I really like that idea of, of printed stuff being suggestive of other materials. So I started out by just sketching a, a vase profile and dividing it up. And first pass was a bit too chunky and it really lost that sense of the, the curve on the outside. So I tweaked it a bit, made it a little more slabby. And I, I like the way it came out. So that, that was kind of what was in my head. So I was, I was pleased with that. Added some texture. Uh, got a sense of where I was going to use the colours. And from there, it was just a matter of, well, you know, what are the actual figures? What are the dimensions? So that I could actually take this over and work in CAD. Now, the obvious question for any multi-part model is, how do these parts fit together? And initially... I thought, let's go with a screw together design, because that's another thing I like, is, is the idea of parts that, that screw together mechanically like that. But it's not actually where I ended up, but we'll get back to that a bit later. Uh, the final bit of preparatory work I did before launching into CAD was getting a sense of how the outside was going to be textured. And uh, again, not actually where we ended up, but that's okay. So... Into Tinkercad we go. I mean, I, I love I love Tinkercad. Tinker, it's just it's so easy. It's so quick. It it's just it's really focused on what it needs to do. So I started out by building this kind of slabby thing, and uh, then making a whole bunch of them and sizing them according to the the sketch I just done. So the idea was just to get this overall sense of does this look the way that I think it should, and yeah, I, I was pleased with it. So then it came down to the actual texture. Now, I decided that rather than just making some little indents, I wanted some big chunky cutouts. So I did that. So Tinkercad has its neat feature where you can just you know, repeat something once you copy it, sorry, once you duplicate it and move it a bit. So a whole bunch of control Ds later and we had a circle of stuff. And once I you know, looked at that, I thought, yep, that's exactly what I want. So I did the same thing for all of the rest of the layers. So then we get to actually connecting these pieces together. Now, I did actually do a, a test print of the screw fitting and it, it just, it, it was too fiddly. The main issue is that these slabs are only 10 millimeters tall and that doesn't allow for a great deal of detail in threads or it requires too much detail in threads. But then I had another idea. What if we had these protrusions into the space within each of these you know, slabs that have pins on three of the, the protrusions and sockets on the other three. And I immediately realized that it was going to look kind of coggy and uh, that pushed all my chunky buttons. And I thought that was great. Okay, so I did that. And there was a bit of fiddling around to get it to, to work quite the way I wanted it. But it, it really had the the kind of look that I love. Now, 
one interesting thing here is that, that all of this part is going to be hidden. I mean, you're not going to see this once it's assembled. And, and that's what really, you know, brings home that, that aspect that it's, it's not just about the end product or, or even about the, the engineering of the thing. It's sometimes just about, you know, the, the joy of designing these things and, and putting them together and, and just having these parts that are just, you know, so appealing in and of themselves. So anyway, that's my excuse for making something vastly overcomplicated. And then of course, you know, I repeated the same approach on each of the other layers or the other slabs. Now, obviously as the slabs get smaller, the protrusions need to move in accordingly, um, but there's nothing tricky there. So in the end, we have all of these parts that are ready to print and assemble. But first, it's probably important to look at them all slotted together and make sure that they do actually fit. And there they are. So if we drop these things down into each other, then uh, we should see our nice, neat vase design. Drop, 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 drop. Done. Look at that. So let's make it real. I mean, look at that. It's just, I just love that kind of chunkiness, that, that aesthetic. It's, it's come out really nicely. I'm really pleased with that. So cool. And now we put it together. I'm probably going to speed this up. Okay, there's a bit there that, that didn't quite, oh, there we go. It's certainly chunky. It, it really does, it, it, it's got an amazing feel to it. I mean, that kind of textural result is, is great. So, I mean, it's, the detail of this, how this goes together, all of those you know, internal bits is, uh, is hidden, but, but I know it's there. All projects need goals, and the goal here was to make something tactile and chunky, and I'm really happy with how this came out. I mean, not all projects go quite so according to plan, and I certainly have my fair share of disasters that should never see the light of day. But this, this I'm happy with. If you would like the files for this, you can find them at My Mini Factory. If you go to myminifactory.com slash users slash clockspring, I think that's probably it. Uh, you'll find all of my stuff on there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ClockSpring3D and you can find me other places. You know how the internet works. Anyway, have fun. Mm -hmm.